ड्यूरिंग द असाइनमेंट अगर बहुत कॉन्फिडेंशियल सेंसिटिव इंफॉर्मेशन है जिसकी मार्केट में बहुत वैल्यू है उस वैल्यू है तो ये वो ये इंफॉर्मेशन को बेच करके बहुत सारा पैसा कमाया जा सकता है सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट थ्रेट पुराना कुछ एरर था वो एरर पता चला जान के उसको दुनिया को नहीं बताया जाता नहीं तो खुद के फर्म का और खुद का रेपुटेशन खराब होगा हमारे जो ऑडिट करने के क्वालिटी कंट्रोल सिस्टम है वो बदनाम होंगे ठीक है जानबूझ के नहीं बताया जाता इसके चांसेस है उसको बोलते सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट थ्रेट फिर नेक्स्ट है सेल्फ रिव्यू थ्रेट आपने ही आपने ही सिस्टम आपने ही अकाउंटिंग सिस्टम को बनाया आपने ही पेरोल सिस्टम को बनाया अब आप खुद ही उसको इवेल्युएट कर रहे हो सेल्फ रिव्यू थ्रेट आपने ही फिक्स एस रजिस्टर बनाया आपने ही ए एस की कंसल्टेंसी की इंड की कंसल्टेंसी की आप आप ही वो सब्जेक्ट मैटर चेक कर रहे हो सेल्फ रिव्यू थ्रेट फिर एडवोकेसी थ्रेट आप प्रमोशन कर रहे हो लिस्टिंग करवा रहे हो शेयर वैल्यूएशन करवा रहे हो पैसा उठा रहे हो इसमें आप भावुक होकर गलत इंफॉर्मेशन मिसलीडिंग इंफॉर्मेशन दे सकते हो एडवोकेसी थ्रेट फिर आप एडवोकेट बने हुए हो ल, आप लिटिगेशन लड़ रहे हो सेबी में जाके केस लड़ रहे हो केस लड़ते वक्त डिफेंड करते वक्त झूठी गलत एग्जैग्रेटेड इंफॉर्मेशन दे सकते हो एडवोकेसी थ्रेट आप लॉबी कर रहे हो आप गवर्नमेंट सबको कन्विंस कर रहे हो किसी लॉ के लिए जो आपके क्लाइंट के लिए बेनिफिशियल हो उस चक्कर में आप गलत जानकारी दे सकते हो एडवोकेसी थ्रेट जब आप किसके एडवोकेट बनते हो तो झूठ गलत चांस एग्जैग्रेशन के चांसेस हो सकते हैं फिर फैमिलियरिटी थ्रेट क्लोज फैमिली मेंबर्स क्लोज फैमिली मेंबर्स डायरेक्टर बन के बैठे हैं ऑफिसर बन कर बैठे हैं फैमिलियरिटी थ्रेट लंबे समय से क्लाइंट के साथ में हमारा एसोसिएशन है हम लंबे समय से ऑडिट कर रहे हैं दस साल बीस साल से उसके अगेंस्ट कैसे जाने जाओ सिंपति है फैमिलिटी थ्रेट हमारा एंगेजमेंट पार्टनर के बैठा है ऑफिसर बनकर बैठा है या फिर बहुत ही सेंसिटिव वो खुद फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स बना रहा है सब्जेक्ट मैटर बना रहा है फैमिलिटी थ्रेट इंटीमिडेशन थ्रेट ब्लैकमेल करना तूने गिफ्ट लिया था पब्लिक डिस्क्लोजर कर दूंगा सबसे खतरनाक इंटीमिडेशन थ्रेट उससे थोड़ा कम तेरे को निकाल दूंगा डिसमिसल इंटीमिडेशन थ्रेट मैं तेरे को नया काम नहीं दूंगा तेरा तेरा काम तेरे को नया काम नहीं दूंगा तेरी फीस नहीं बढ़ाऊंगा तेरे काम को प्रमोट नहीं करूंगा इंटीमिडेशन थ्रेट इतने हम इतने बड़े एक्सपर्ट हैं इतना नॉलेज है क्लाइंट के पास में इतना ज्यादा नॉलेज है इतना एक्सपर्ट इतना रेपुटेशन है हमारे अगेंस्ट जा रहा है तेरी हिम्मत कैसे हुई तेरे कौन मानेगा तेरे को दबा देंगे प्रेशर डालना एक्सपर्टीज से प्रेशर डालना इंटिमिडेशन थ्रेट फिर अब हम लोग वापस सभी थ्रेट्स को देखेंगे लेकिन एक जॉब वाले के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से हम लोग देखेंगे जो जो चार्ड अकाउंटेंट जॉब कर रहा है उसके पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से हम लोग देखेंगे कंपनी जहाँ पे काम कर रहा है वहां पे शेयर में पैसा लगा है लोन लिया है या दिया है अपने शेयर्स अपने पैसे को प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए मैनुपलेशन कर सकता है सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट थ्रेट अपने रेमुनरेशन मिलना चाहिए अच्छा बोनस कमीशन इस ऑफ मिलना चाहिए उसके लिए मैनुपलेशन कर सकता है रेमुनरेशन थ्रेट सबसे बेनिफिशियल फाइनेंशियल शेयर्स डिवेंचर्स बॉन्ड्स इन्वेस्टमेंट्स को बचाना रेमुनरेशन को बचाना उसके बाद उसको बहुत सारे गिफ्ट प्रॉमिस किए गिफ्ट मिलते रहे इसलिए गलत काम करना सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट थ्रेट एसेट्स का बेनिफिट उठा रहा है वो बढ़िया घर मिल रहा है उसको कंपनी तरफ से उसका फायदा उठा रहा है वो छोड़ना नहीं चाहता उसका फायदा उठाना चाहता है सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट थ्रेट फिर सेल्फ रिव्यू थ्रेट उसी ने कंसल्टेंसी दी थी अब वो उसी को इवेल्युएट कर रहा है उसने बोला था एनालगमेशन करो और वो वही उस डिसीजन को इवेल्युएट कर रहा है खुद का काम खुद चेक कर रहा है सेल्फ रिव्यू थ्रेट फिर एडवोकेसी थ्रेट कंपनी के लिए प्रोस्पेक्टस बनाते बनाते वहां पे झूठी अनसब्सटेंशिएटेड मिसलीडिंग एग्जैग्रेटेड बातें लिख दे रहा है एडवोकेसी थ्रेट बह गया है ठीक है अच्छा प्रोस्पेक्टस बनाते बह जाना फैमिलिटी थ्रेट फैमिली मेंबर्स फैमिली मेंबर्स प्रेशराइज कर रहा है कि यार तू फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स को बढ़ा चढ़ा के बता उसको मैनिपुलेट कर तो क्लोज फैमिली मेंबर्स प्रेशर डाल रहे हैं फैमिलिटी थ्रेट लंबे समय से मैं कंपनी के लिए काम कर रहा हूँ मैं कंपनी को आगे बढ़ा देखना चाहता हूँ फैमिलिटी थ्रेट फिर इंटीमिडेशन थ्रेट निकाल देंगे तेरे को निकाल देंगे तेरे को डिसमिसल इंटीमिडेशन थ्रेट प्रेशराइज करना तंग करना परेशान करना हर तरीके से गलत काम कर इसको कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दे उसको कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दे ये अकाउंटिंग कर इन्फ्लुएंस करना इंटीमिडेशन थ्रेट इसके अलावा अदर थ्रेट्स हो सकते हैं पर्सनल ब्लैकमेलिंग करना ठीक है थ्रेट है आप कॉम्प्यूटर्स के साथ काम कर रहे हैं लीक होने के चांस थ्रेट है ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट बनकर लोग चलते हैं गड़क होने के चांसेस है थ्रेट है गवर्नमेंट का प्रेशर आ सकता है थ्रेट है इन सब को अदर थ्रेट्स बोला जाता है फिर हम अगर बात करेंगे इवेल्युएशन ऑफ थ्रेट्स सबसे पहले आपको असेसमेंट करना पड़ेगा थ्रेट कैसा है इसमें 
जो फर्म में काम कर रहे हैं जो कंपनी में काम कर रहे हैं उनका एनवायरनमेंट कैसा है पॉलिसीज प्रोसीजर्स कैसी है उसको समझना बहुत जरूरी है उसका हेवी इंपैक्ट होता है थ्रेट में एनवायरनमेंट अच्छा है तो थ्रेट कम हो जाते हैं एनवायरनमेंट खराब है थ्रेट बढ़ जाते हैं फिर देखना पड़ेगा एक्सेप्टेबल लेवल थ्रेट एक्सेप्टेबल लेवल का होना चाहिए अगर एक रीजनेबल इनफॉर्म थर्ड पार्टी रीजनेबल इनफॉर्म थर्ड पार्टी ऐसा मानती है कि हम प्रिंसिपल्स को कंप्लाई कर रहे हो सर कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं कर रहे तो हम उसको एक्सेप्टेबल बोलते हैं रीजनेबल इनफॉर्म थर्ड पार्टी टेस्ट के बारे में बोलूं हम ये खुद भी टेस्ट खुद मन ही मन सोच करके लगा कि भाई ये पूरी इन्फॉर्मेशन मैं थर्ड पार्टी को दूंगा तो वो क्या सोचेंगे या फिर मैं खुद किसी थर्ड पार्टी के पास जाकर उनसे ओपिनियन ले सकता हूँ ये जो थर्ड पार्टी होगी ये जो थर्ड पार्टी होगी इट नॉट बी अकाउंटेंट ये एक बिजनेस हो सकता है एक लॉयर हो सकता है कंपनी सेक्रेटरी हो सकते हैं एक रिटायर्ड आर्मी ऑफिसर हो सकते कोई भी हो सकते अगर मैं बात करता हूँ एड्रेसिंग थ्रेट की अगर एक्सेप्टेबल लेवल का नहीं कुछ करना पड़ेगा सबसे पहले कहते एलिमिनेट वो रिलेशनशिप शेयर्स सब कुछ तोड़ दो एलिमिनेट कर दो या फिर सेफ गार्ड लगाकर कुछ एडिशनल चीजें करके थ्रेड के लेवल को रिड्यूस करो किसी और से काम कराओ डबल रिव्यू कराओ एक्स्ट्रा रिव्यू कराओ रिड्यूस कर दो अगर एलिमिनेशन और रिड्यूस करना पॉसिबल नहीं एक्सेप्टेबल लेवल तक तो डिक्लाइन कर दो अप्रोप्रेट एक्शन लेना पड़ेगा हम कोशिश करेंगे हम कोशिश करेंगे सेफ गार्ड लगाने की नहीं हो पाया एलिमिनेट करने की वो भी नहीं हो पाया तो फिर हमको डिक्लाइन करना ही पड़ेगा सिचुएशन टू सिचुएशन हमको कॉल लेने पड़ेंगे अगर फिर मैं बात करता हूँ सेफ की तो वहां पे शॉर्टकट है ट्रैप करो थ्रेड्स को सेफ गार्ड करो ट्रैप करो सेपरेट टीम्स लगाओ कॉन्फिडेंशियल इन्फॉर्मेशन चेक करने के लिए अलग टीम लगाओ बाकी के लिए अलग टीम लगाओ आप थ्रेड को कंट्रोल कर लोगे रिसोर्सिंग ज्यादा लोगों को लगाओ ज्यादा टीम मेंबर्स को लगाओ ज्यादा टाइम दो ताकि गलती ना हो सेफ बोलते हैं रिव्यू एक बाहर से रिव्यूअर को लेकर आओ पूरा काम चेक करो ताकि गलती ना हो सेफ गार्ड है ये ट्रैप देन ए सेंड फॉर अनदर फॉर्म दूसरे फॉर्म से काम करवाओ या फिर री परफॉर्म करवाओ सेफ है ये फिर आप एक काम करो ऑडिट सर्विसेज एक अलग पार्टनर टीम से कराओ और नॉन ऑडिट एक अलग पार्टनर टीम से कराओ ताकि दोनों एक में कोई इन्फ्लुएंस ना करे कोई प्रॉब्लम ना जाए ये भी सेफ है फिर हमने देखा नो क्लार नॉन कंप्लायस ऑफ लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन
हेलो हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड मेंटली फिजिकली फिट एंड फाइन सो गाइस यस्टरडे वी हैड अ ट्रेमेंडस सेशन वेयर वी सॉ द बैकग्राउंड बैकग्राउंड about the subject about the paper how it is going to be what should be our approach and we started with the wonderful chapter chapter number 19 that is professional ethics i expect that you should you should listen to audios on regular basis and at least two audios on daily basis it can go up to three or four maybe but you should listen to audios on daily basis guys this is going to be a big game changer in your preparation towards audit okay guys uh, now these particular lectures are in english guys those who are looking for hindi lectures already we have started the batch batch is midway you can go and see uh, you can go to our website you can go to our website or talk to our admin about them this is a purely english batch okay so those who are uh, comfortable and willing to study in english you can see these lectures otherwise our hindi and english batch is going on you can see that also okay let's see guys so yesterday we saw that uh, a very simple thing that there is a case study where a chartered accountant he accepts bribes and he is not reporting npa so that's bad really bad thing he should not have done that okay then we saw introduction what are ethics what are professional ethics they are very important to maintain the trust and we have very beautiful code of ethics booklet and our motto ya esha sapteshu jagriti that is based on ethics and then we saw parts of the code of ethics booklet there are four parts of code of ethics booklet you should know about these parts because tomorrow you will have to refer tomorrow you will have to refer this booklet and take very critical calls if you are in practice you should know irrespective of in practice also and in job also and its importance is going to increase more and more as we go ahead because a lot of unethical activities are going to take place and then you have to save yourself and to save yourself to be on proper path you will need code of ethics then we saw the structure also how they are built we saw that and the thing which we were we were starting was fundamental principle we were about to start fundamental principles which are given in code of ethics booklet okay so guys let's see let's see fundamental principles given in code of ethics booklet so these are five fundamental principles this was the shortcut we were discussing yesterday these are five fundamental principles so they say that these fundamental ethical principles are extremely important as chartered accountant professional we are supposed to follow this to maintain dignity of this profession importance of this profession see there is a difference between business and profession in business only profit is the objective nothing else but then when we talk about profession definitely earning fees earning money is one of the objective but that is not the only objective we have to balance things we have to earn money also but we cannot compromise but we cannot compromise on our ethical principles these fundamental principles that's how our profession is different from the business okay now let's see so shortcut is office of cbi office of cbi is going to tell us what are the five fundamental principles o is for objectivity
ऑब्जेक्टिविटी सी इज फॉर कॉम्पिटेंस प्रोफेशनल कॉम्पिटेंस एंड ड्यू केयर सी इज अगेन फॉर confidentiality b is for behavior professional behavior i is for integrity these are five fundamental principles five fundamental principles five ethical principles we need to follow these principles then only our conduct will be called as ethical conduct ethical behavior now what do we mean by objectivity see objective word objective word has two meaning one meaning is aim aim goal target so many people ask us what what is your objective what is your target what do you want to become in your life what do you want to achieve in your life that is called objective aim goal target okay so we are going to use that meaning also as we go ahead and then and then we have one more meaning and that's very interesting objective see mcqs are called objective examination descriptive is called subjective examination now why is that why mcq is called objective examination why question answer in descriptive form is called subjective examination why think about it because in mcq in mcq answer is fixed a b or a b c or d and now whoever is checking is whether a human being or machine person is not supposed to apply personal judgment checker in case of mcq checker is not supposed to apply personal judgment of what is good what is bad no personal judgment is required if it matches give marks if it doesn't match don't give marks that's it because checking is completely unbiased personal likings disliking doesn't come into picture that's why mcq is called objective way of examination but then when it comes to descriptive you write answer of two pages but still how many marks you will be getting that depends on that depends who is the checker if he is if he is having adequate knowledge whether check whether checker whether checker is having adequate knowledge if checker if checker is not having adequate knowledge checker is not having adequate knowledge okay if if or not having adequate knowledge the person will feel oh you got such a good such a good points i'm so happy if he is not he is reasonably knowledged if he is reasonably knowledged okay he is in a very good mood and he feel that many students should become chartered accountants then he may allot good marks 4 out of 5 5 out of 5 but then if he is very knowledgeable person very knowledgeable person he feel okay this is not written that is not written he is in bad mood he doesn't want many students to become chartered accountant so personal liking disliking personal state of mind is going to come in picture definitely it is going to influence 
एंड चेकिंग विल गेट बायस्ड चेकिंग चेकिंग विल गेट बायस्ड ओके सो दैट्स इट्स कॉल्ड सब्जेक्टिव सो द अदर मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड ऑब्जेक्टिव इज बींग अनबायस्ड बींग न्यूट्रल कीपिंग पास्ट एक्सपीरियंस keeping past prejudices see we all are prejudiced we have perceptions we have prior perception about things okay keep your prejudices aside perception aside personal liking disliking aside your uh, uh, your personal relation relatives aside whether the other person is your friend or enemy keep it aside and go for unbiased neutral decision making that is called being objective then c is for competence when you go for work update yourself you should be aware about latest company law amendments latest banking regulation amendments you should be aware about accounting standards in as standards on auditing and you should use all that knowledge and you should work carefully so if you are keeping yourself updated and working as per the law rules and regulations ethical behavior ethical behavior incorporates this being updated and working carefully the next is confidentiality secret non public information should be preserved it should not be disclosed to people it may lead to heavy losses to your client take care of your client clients will get annoyed they will get unhappy they may not trust you don't do this they will bad mouth the complete profession professional behavior professional behavior respect law everything should be done as per respect law respect engagement letter respect understanding respect time limits respect cost budgets and work accordingly don't do anything which bring disrepute bad name to the institute okay that is professional behavior we have to see them and last and very important integrity be honest when you communicate with people when you make your reports be honest communicate what is the truth write what is truth being honest and showing integrity so these are five fundamental principles these are five fundamental principles five ethical principles will where all the chartered accountants are supposed to follow these five principles irrespective of whether they are in practice or whether they are in job they are supposed to follow it because they are representing cas ca profession so guys let's see fundamental principles to meet the goals of the accountancy to meet the goals of the accountancy profession professional accountants must adhere to fundamental principles of code of ethics given below and the first is integrity see guys you may get practical cases on this you may get a theoretical question also you may get a practical case also there are big chances that you get these cases integrity okay now being honest integrity a professional accountant must uphold the principle he should always follow the principle of integrity being honest and straightforward whenever he communicates with others and whenever he makes his report he should be honest he should be truthful he should write what is true in his reports which necessitates honesty and straightforwardness in all profession and business relationship so whatever he does he should be honest about it in all the communications and reporting be honest integrity so that is integrity that is definition now they are elaborating they are saying when clients come to you and assignments are offered to you don't get associated with people who have bad reputation who
who have reputation to do wrong things, reputation to spread lies, reputation to do unethical activities, being honest if you want to mean if you want to protect and maintain your integrity it's very important to stay away from people who are doing unethical activities who are spreading lies because if you get associated with them automatically your name and your work will get affected that is extremely important same is applicable to our studies also the single most important factor is what kind of friends you have that is the single most most important factor what kind of circle you have so i scored i scored uh, what hardly i scored 60 70% in my 10th class i was an average student somehow scoring 60 70% then i changed my college and my surrounding was so good my friend they were so good everyone was 95% plus and look at my 12th results then i scored pcm 97 98% unbelievable the single most my friend circle was very good then from there then from there uh, i became in uh, ca foundation i became district topper then ca second level i became rank holder i did my articles from private or scoopers and then before becoming chartered accountant i started teaching one of the most important factor is my friends my circle they were so good they were hard working they were honest they were ambitious and that influenced me immensely to do better same thing they are saying don't associate don't associate accountant should not knowingly associate with any information that is materially false if you are being offered any assignment to evaluate to give assurance to report on any information any information which you know is false misleading not prepared properly it omits or doesn't obscures that means they are not mentioning it clearly all required information if you are getting any assignment where the information is for you know that it is false it is misleading it is not prepared properly there are a lot of omission things are obscured that means they are not clearly mentioned don't associate with such assignments you may get a you may get a case study in exam that you are an auditor and there is a company which is going for ipo and they are giving you documents and you know that this document is already having a lot of false information as a auditor what will you do then you should refer that one of the fundamental principle is integrity and as per integrity we should not get associated with such information that will be breach of that will be breach of integrity and you will be punished for that there will be breach of integrity there will be breach of code of ethics then disassociate disassociate if accountant realizes they have been associated with misleading information they must take steps to disassociate themselves from it if after taking assignment you come to know that oh my god there is lot of false information everything is a lie everything is a lie there is lot of false information lot of untruthful information these document statements are not proper you should get disassociated withdraw from the assignment resign from the assignment if you see that things are all false information is spread across the statements you were called you were called to report uh, you were you were called to report on some statements give assurance on the statements but then everything is false disassociate or you have one more option you can modify your opinion yes you can give qualification you can give adverse that financial statement doesn't give true and fair view if you do that it will be considered compliance with the principle of integrity 
comply with the principle of integrity, that's absolutely fine. So, guys, now remember this. So, if you get a short note, you may get a case study for this. So, if you get a short note on integrity, what will you do? Okay. What we will do is integrity. No need to remember section, but section 111. So, this is integrity you are going to explain. See, this is what you are supposed to remember ultimately. Okay. That you will explain definition. What do you mean by being integrity? No? Showing integrity, being honest, straightforward in communication and reporting. Then you are going to explain its application. Its application. Don't associate Don't associate, okay. Then after taking assignment, after taking assignment, after taking assignment, you may go for, you may go for, if you feel that, okay, that it's a misleading information. Disassociate Disassociate or Modify opinion So this is what ultimately you should remember Okay, very simple so they are explaining definition they are explaining definition of integrity and then they are explaining how to apply the concept of integrity in practical life not associating is an application of integrity after accepting the assignment after accepting the assignment if you find that things are not proper you disassociate or you have one more option you can go and modify the opinion. Okay. Okay, guys. So, that was integrity. Now, next is objectivity. Objectivity. What do you mean objective? Being unbiased. Keeping your personal liking, disliking, relations, everything aside and Making unbiased, neutral, proper decisions, judgment across the assignment. Whenever you are performing any assignment, that is called being objective. So, again, you explain the definition. A professional accountant must adhere, section 112, must adhere to the principle of objectivity, which means not allowing any kind of bias conflict of interest or undue influence of others to compromise their professional or business judgment. So, when you perform any assignment, audit assignment, review assignment, any particular assignment, accounting assignment, you have to make, you have to make a lot of judgments. When you make these judgments, stay away, away from any kind of bias. Don't show any kind of favoritism, uh, partiality towards anyone. Stay away from conflict of interest. So, don't do two such roles which conflict with each other. Okay. You are also helping company to prepare something and you are also auditing it. That is a conflict of interest. Don't do such things. Okay. Don't do, don't be under influence. Don't be under pressure of anyone. Being, being unbiased means staying away from any kind of bias, personal liking, disliking. Staying away from conflict of interest, staying away from any kind of pressure. Okay. So, don't bow down under any pressure and don't get carried away. Don't get carried away in personal liking, disliking, and personal benefits. Don't get carried away and don't bow down. Don't get carried away for personal benefits. 
and don't get carried away and don't go down in front of anyone. Okay, that's called being objective. Undue influence. So, there's an application. If you come across any assignment where people are pressurizing you, if you come across assignment where you feel there are a lot of bias involved, you uh, assignment assignment of relatives is uh, assignment of relatives is offered to you. See, these are principles. This is code of ethics. This is code of ethics, and this is this is discussing principles. This is code of ethics, guys, and this is discussing the principles. We are not talking about company law. See, com company is not the only entity we do audit. We do audit for company also. We do audit for trust also. We do audit for proprietor also, partnership also, cooperative society also, and many different types of entity. Companies act is only company is only one type of entity. Company law is applicable only to one type of entity, and that is company. These principles are in general discussing overall thing. Some of the some of these points may will be disqualified under company law. That is absolutely fine. That is absolutely fine, guys. Okay. Now, so if you come across a situation where a lot of pressurizing is done to you, your relatives and friends are putting pressure on you. Your relationships are a relation are putting pressure. You are being offered assignment. Okay, of your friends, of your relatives. So, friends and relatives. So, there is a bias. You are being offered assignment whether you have already worked. It has been your company earlier. Again, there is a conflict of interest. Or people are putting pressure on you. That you have to do such kind of reporting. Now, if you face such situation, there is an undue influence. So, in any assignment, if you think that people or circumstances are putting a lot of pressure on you, putting a lot of influence on you to go for inappropriate reporting, to do inappropriate things, don't accept such assignments. If you think anywhere there is an influence, pressurizing, don't accept this particular assignment. So, it's very simple guys. So, we talk about objectivity. See, I understand there is a lot of theory involved. I understand that uh, in the initial part, a lot of theory is involved. But then guys, whatever we are studying, we are studying as per ICI study material. We are studying everything as per ICI study material. Something which is given in study material is extremely important for us. And you should expect questions or theory questions or practical case studies on such things. We cannot avoid it. We cannot avoid it. And we are following the complete module in the same sequence. So, we have to cover it first. Okay. Once we are through with this theory portion, then we have more interesting things. But then, as I said, a lot of case studies can be asked here also. So, Objectivity section 112. First, you explain definition. In definition, no liking, no favoritism, no personal liking, disliking. There should not be conflict between two roles you play. And no pressurizing. No pressurizing. There should not be any kind of pressurizing. Okay. Then assignments, engagements. Don't accept, don't accept assignments if there is undue influence. If there is undue influence. So, you should remember only two things that, okay, 
I know the definition and in practical life, if I am being offered assignments where a lot of biasness or conflicts or especially a lot of undue influence or pressurizing is involved, I should not accept, I should not accept such assignments. Okay, guys, uh, this is a regular batch in English, regular batch in English for May 24 and uh, May 24 and uh, attempts after that, May 24, November 24 and so on. So, I won't be entertaining any other doubts right now here. If you got any doubts, okay, then you can simply go to Audit Guru uh, Telegram channel or we have made a group also. We have a telegram group and you can go and post it there. I will resolve your doubts. Okay. Now, next is professional competence and due care. So, being ethical is to show honesty and integrity. That is common sense. Then being ethical is very important to remain unbiased and neutral, to stay away from conflict of interest and not to bow down under influence. Next is, next is professional competence. Very interesting again. See, being ethical means you should have adequate, you should have proper competence that means you should have adequate knowledge and skills you should have adequate knowledge and skills so that you are able to perform the assignment as per the requirement of law requirement of regulations and requirement of standards so law is the big thing then the next thing is regulation then the next thing is standards and auditing so as per this principle Whenever you go to any assignment, you should have adequate knowledge and skills which are required to perform that assignment as per law, regulations and professional standards. So, you should have competence. You should have competence. A professional accountant must maintain, must attain, must attain and maintain. He is supposed to attain and maintain professional knowledge and skills at the level knowledge and skill at the level required to ensure competent service to clients or employing organization to your clients if you're doing practice then you're supposed to give service to your clients if you're doing job then you're supposed to give service to your organization employer in line with current technical professional standards and relevant legislation okay so that's important that you should have adequate knowledge and skills, you should attain them. Then next is use them diligently. Once you have proper competence, then diligent, diligently, the accountant must act diligently. Diligently means carefully, thoroughly, timely basis, apply all the laws, standards, requirements, apply everything and perform the assignment. Not only this, keep maintaining your knowledge. Continuing, we all know, we all know in CA we have uh, CPRs, once you become chartered accountant, after becoming chartered accountant, you are supposed to, you are supposed to attend minimum number of hours of training or read material, continuing professional education. CA Institute says that after becoming chartered accountant, you are supposed to have continuing, you are supposed to have continuing professional education. In that, you are supposed to attend seminars of minimum number of hours or you are supposed to see videos of minimum number of hours or you are supposed to read material. You are supposed to do this and keep yourself updated. Maintaining professional competence requires continuing awareness and understanding of relevant technical professional business developments. This facilitated by continuing professional development. So, there should be continuous professional development. Not only this, you are supposed to maintain your knowledge, but at the same time, you are supposed to maintain knowledge of your team also. So, in, in uh, 
uh, so in many uh, many firms in many firms uh, on saturdays on saturdays on uh, on saturdays or on some particular weekday they will be having seminars presentations on new standards new law requirement new gst requirement new income tax requirement forms and so on big fours will have training should ensure reasonable step that working under their authority have appropriate training and supervision transparency if necessary the accountant should make client the employing organization other users of their profession aware of any limitation inherent in the services or uh, or activities listen so you are supposed to work carefully that's absolutely fine professional competence and due care at the same time you should keep you should work carefully but you should keep your client informed let's see a parallel example so if you go to doctor doctor will say that okay this is the issue this is the disease or problem you are having and uh, i think that this operation needs to be done so that you are out of this disease out of this problem i have adequate knowledge and skills i have infrastructure i have people but then let me tell you there is a risk involved there is a limitation there is a problem that in 5% of the cases it is going to relapse it is going to come back and if that comes back then we need to operate again we know that you are working carefully but even after that you are supposed to keep client informed about it so you may get a case study in the exam you may get a case study in the exam that a ca firm is not taking enough steps to keep his team updated with the latest changes comment and then you will say that the principle of professional competence is not being followed then you may get a case you may get a, you may get a case in exam that uh, a chartered accountant a chartered accountant is working carefully and he doesn't feel like because he is working carefully he doesn't feel like informing limitations problems pro limitations shortcomings problems problems which may arise which may arise in the assignment you are not explaining the other part the negative part again that will be non compliance of professional competence and due care guys this chapter is extremely important because it's going to come professional competence professionals competence and due care again you will be explaining you will be explaining number 1 definition of what do you mean by competence that is adequate adequate knowledge and skills so that we are able to perform assignment as per law rules regulations see i always talk in a sequence i will be always talking in a sequence only guys okay so definition adequate then we are supposed to maintain supposed to maintain maintain recent developments become aware about the recent see we are writing but then as i said we already have a very good notes we are going to follow that but then as we write it, we become more and more comfortable recent developments also maintain knowledge of the team members and then
डिलीजेंस अप्लाई देम केयरफुली इन इन थरोली कंप्लीट थिंग एंड डू द वर्क इन टाइमली मैनर ओके टाइमली इंप्लीमेंट थिंग्स इज वेरी सिंपल यू अटेन द नॉलेज यू मेंटेन द नॉलेज यूअर नॉलेज यूर टीम मेंबर्स नॉलेज एंड बी डिलीजेंट ओके you may get small small case studies on this you may get mcqs on this so that time you should be you know you should be confident okay we have studied this and then again guys again you must be thinking how will we remember so many things it's very simple as you listen to audios again and again as you listen to audios again and again you will become comfortable okay so i will say that okay first maintain the competence that is point number 1 then you maintain your own knowledge then others knowledge be diligent and the fourth point transparency that's important working carefully working carefully is absolutely fine but at the same time you are supposed to explain people at the same time you are supposed to explain people okay you are supposed to explain them about what about the limitations about the limitations about the problems about the issues working carefully is required apart from that but then however good you work there will be always some shortcomings there will be always some problems things may go wrong keep people informed what's the harm keep people informed about the uh, keep people informed about it see even i am going to give abc analysis before exams i also give abc analysis okay i work hard i do everything then i come up with abc analysis also these are a category chapter these are b category chapter these are c category chapters and so on see students nowadays students they worry a lot so if they have 100 minutes they will worry for 90 minutes and study for 10 minutes so they worry a lot they keep worrying about everything so they worry a lot they are always anxious and they work less so how abc analysis help so we we'll say that okay don't worry uh, let's do one thing start with the e category at least start at least start with this few chapters first he at least start studying he stops worrying and at least he start studying so that way is okay fine he has started at least at least he has covered a category now he is getting confidence to cover b category and he may do important questions of c category that is the objective so i am going to give that but then i am going to say that okay listen don't get stuck to a at least do something up to c and if institute is in a bad mood okay all this abc analysis they may not work may not work but as per my experience out of four exams in one exam it won't work three exams it works but then if you have sufficient time if you have started studying early you should cover everything you should cover everything definitely you should use abc analysis to do smart studies that you will spend more time on a less time on b and less time and then less time on c and so on the kind of things you are going to cover you can use that analysis but then show transparency then next is now next is very interesting guys next is very interesting let's face guys so we are studying starting portion of professional ethics and it is all about beautiful wonderful five fundamental principles we have already seen integrity and its application then we have seen after that objectivity and its application and you stay away from undue influence then about professional competence and its application and then now we are seeing confidentiality that's extreme guys you are you will be getting lot of cases lot of cases 
and lot of questions from confidentiality. Okay. Now we already know. We already know about confidentiality. Let's see. The best part of the CA profession is, I think the best part, why chart accountants are so, so successful. You know why people are, so, people are successful in nowadays, in today's world? People, those people are successful who have a lot of information. The most valuable thing, the most valuable thing in today's world is information. Information is the most, most valuable, valuable thing. If you have proper information, you can build a very big business. You can have a successful business. And you can achieve any big thing if you have proper information. Okay. Now, these politicians are fools. Those, those politicians who do corruption, they are biggest fools. They have so much of information. Simply use that information properly in the business. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to do any corruption. You know from where, where which new roads are going to come. You already know which new roads are going to come. Okay. Simply go and buy land. You will get loads of money. You know from where bullet train is going to go. Buy land, you will earn loads of money. You know that in the next 5 years, where government is going to spend lot of money. Enter into that sector, you will earn loads of money. You have lot of analysis with you. So the most important thing in today's world is information. And chart accountants, chart accountants are blessed with information. The best thing is that right from articleship, right from articleship, we uh, right from articleship we go to uh, we go and meet the owners. We go and meet the owners of the business. We uh, we go and meet directors. We talk to them. We have access to so much of privilege information from where raw material is coming, how these guys are doing production, how they are selling it. What is their USP? What is their profit margin? What is their production process? What is their marketing strategy? And everything. What is their advertisement expenditure? We have so much of information. Key to we and we are given this information from early stage. And that's why chart accountants are so successful. Take my words, guys. Apart from technical knowledge, technical knowledge will be 50% required in practical world. Next 50% is information and judgment. Information and judgment. What kind of information you have about people? What kind of information you have about people? About the conditions? About the market? Okay. About the businesses? And what kind of judgment you can make? Whether the person is someone you should work with? Where the person is, whether this business is something I should go into. Next to important thing is going to be information and your ability to make wonderful judgments. Will this product, will this product work? Your judgments. Will this pricing work? Your judgment. Will this advertisement work? Judgment. Whether this production technology will work? Judgment. Okay, anyways guys. So, Right from articleship everywhere, we are blessed with this. The secret to success is information. But then, we, it's, it's great. During the articleship, everything, we get information, we learn a lot. There's no harm in that. You can learn a lot. But then you cannot disclose this information to anyone else. You cannot disclose this information to anyone else. You cannot misuse this information to get unethical gains in the share market or anywhere. So, we are supposed to maintain confidentiality. We are supposed to maintain confidentiality. Professional accountants are bound to maintain confidentiality regarding all the non-public, non-public secret information which they have obtained during the course of their practice or during their employment 
दे हैव टू मेंटेन कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी सो इनफैक्ट यू आर नॉट सपोज टू शेयर दिस इंफॉर्मेशन विथ यूर क्लोज एसोसिएट्स एंड फैमिली मेंबर्स नो when you get information during the during the during the, any assignment or employment don't share not privilege secret non public information with anyone not even with your family members don't share it consequences can be very bad company may client may face client may face many losses because of that because of leak of information don't share crucial sensitive information with family members don't share them with your professional colleagues don't don't share don't share them don't share them don't share them with the don't share them with professional colleagues also don't share with them also no not with them at all yes guys that's very important so you must be having lot of your professional colleagues at friends very chart accountants must be your friends you are not supposed to share information with them also accountant must be aware of risk of unintentional disclosure even in social setting especially to close associates and family members internal confidentiality internal confidentiality so you may get a case that you learn something in your assignment and you are sharing as a education you are giving all the details to your some of your professional colleagues not allowed accountant must preserve confidential of information within the firm or employing organization even within the firm if you are doing some assignment don't go and share sensitive information to other team member to other other teams see in a firm there will be multiple teams like in price auto scoopers there were multiple teams so we were we were team of around 30 30 professionals chart accounts and articles and there were something like six such teams six such teams so around 200 guys were in the mumbai office in audit that time now it is huge not just 200 so around 200 200 250 people were there so we had multiple teams don't go and share this information with the other teams and if you are a chart account working in a company don't go and share with the other departments don't share sensitive information unless it is a part of the work don't share it don't share it with the prospective clients don't share with the clients you are going to get don't try to impress them don't try to impress them by giving confidential you may get a case you you impressed a client you impressed a employer by giving a confidential information from your client or your employer if you are into practice i am talking about clients if you are into job i am talking about the employer don't misuse it accountant should not con should not use confidential information for personal gain or benefit of third party and this obligation continues even after even after professional employment is has ended even once relationship ends then also you are supposed to preserve confidentiality additionally their staff and advisors respect this duty of confidentiality you should do it and your staff and advisor should also do it so guys again so if i study here then you should again there is a definition that you are supposed to explain that non public information then very important your family members and close associates they are very close to you then next next i will say that uh next in closeness is your other teams within the firm don't share with them also don't share it with your closest see that is how it is sequence see if you study my notes carefully i have taken care of lot of things all the sequences there there is some logic behind it and moment you do that moment you create a flow it becomes very easy to understand things and very easy to retain things 
इंटरनल कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी इंटरनल कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी देन सी दीज गाइज आर क्लोज टू अस देन द प्रोस्पेक्टिव दैट इज इफ द पर्सन इज नॉट सो क्लोज टू अस टू सी डोंट मिस यूज दिस इंफॉर्मेशन फॉर पर्सनल बेनिफिट एंड इन्फॉर्म योर स्टाफ मेंबर्स ऑल्सो अबाउट इट दैट डोंट डू दिस डू टेल देम ऑल्सो ओके सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी first is you are supposed to explain the definition then really and close associates then after that don't share within entity within entity internal don't do internal sharing don't share information with other team other for other teams don't share from prospective prospective clients or employer don't misuse don't misuse this information yourself or your staff members also don't misuse information okay guys again as i said you may get now next is a very interesting thing again guys i expect lot of questions lot of case studies from confidentiality okay breach of confidentiality breach of confidentiality and now from uh, yeah, from inter you must be studying okay we can breach confidentiality and uh, <laughs> there are two exceptions to it so you must be studying it there are two exceptions to it there are two exceptions one exception is if it is required by law if it is required by law and the other exception is first exception is if it is required by law and the next exception is if it is permitted by the client okay now this code of ethics have gone in great detail code of ethics because see it is a copy of international code of ethics it is copy of international code of ethics we are simply uh, following international code of ethics we are saying to the world that we are in line with you we are following all these big principles okay so you may get a case you may get a case where uh, there are some allegations on you there are some allegations on you that you have not worked properly you have not done audit carefully you have not prepared financial statement properly so there are allegations on you and so can you disclose some confidential information to protect yourself think about it can you can you do that to protect yourself 
there is a question mark. There is a very important question, practical life problem. How to handle this situation? What code of ethics says about it? Then, see what code of ethics says. See, these are very tricky. These are very tricky, uh, tricky uh, situations, tricky situation, tricky circumstances. In exam, they are going to specify answer as per code of ethics. What should be done as per code of ethics is one thing. But then when it comes to confidentiality, we have to go and look into CA Act also. CA Act also. So in practical life, you have to see what code of ethics is saying. You have to see what CA Act is saying. You need to present it in the front of the court of law. And then decision will come up whether such thing is allowed or not. Just a minute, guys. Okay guys, we are back. There was some internet issue. Don't worry. I have not taught anything. I have not taught anything about it. Okay. Now, so the situation was, can we share information with the court? Uh, can we do that? Can we share that information? So, in exam, you are going to get question answer as per code of ethics. So, when you are going to answer as per code of ethics, just answer as per this code of ethics, what we are going to discuss right now. And then sometimes you are going to get answer as per CA Act. So you have to answer as per CA Act. Don't try to mix them right now. I don't expect a very complicated case. I expect a very simple straightforward case. Either on Code of Ethics here. Either on CA Act which we are going to study later. Okay. Let's see. So what are the exceptions out here? What are the exceptions? That's very important. Legal requirement. Yes. You can breach confidentiality. You can breach principle of confidentiality if it is required by law. We know the best example under Companies Act. Under Companies Act, we have section 143. Under Companies Act, we have section 143, subsection 12, which talks about fraud reporting, in which we give confidential, in which we in which we give confidential information. Conf in which we give confidential information uh, confidential uh, confidential information within the company to the government to the government of india okay so we breach confidentiality because it is required by law and is given in section 143 that you can breach this is absolutely fine you will not be uh, it will not be considered professional misconduct you will not be punished for this so Legal requirement, disclosure of conf is mandatory when required by law, when required by law such as when reporting legal infringements, irrevocables to public authorities or during legal proceedings. So if it is required by law, if law is saying, if law is clearly saying that you are supposed to give this information to so and so person, you are supposed to give this information, you have to do it. It is absolutely fine. You can breach confidentiality principle. A regulatory response. Suppose chartered accountant is called by SEBI. 
called by SEBI, called by RBI, called by IRDA. Accountant may it's very important, need to disclose information in response to an inquiry or investigation by a professional regulatory body. So, if an inquiry is going on and a particular regulation specifically says that auditor is supposed to give so and so information, we should. And if we have any doubt, we should take legal advice. We should take legal advice about it, whether to share or not. See, it's again, it's in sequence. So, if law says you have to share this information with authorities, you have to do that. If regulation, regulatory authorities call you, investigation is going on and is required by the regulation to give some information, you have to do it. And if there is a doubt, you take legal advice. Then below that, you must be aware about peer review and quality review. Are you aware about peer review and quality review? Have you heard about it? See, once, once CA firms, they do their audit, then we have a peer review board. CA Institute is having a peer review board. Peer means our colleagues. Peer review board with sense reviewer to go and check whether audit firms are working properly. Are they doing quality audit? So, peer reviews. Then, central government has made one more board that is quality review board. They also send technical reviewers to check whether CA firms are doing quality audit. Okay. Then we have NFRA also, National Financial Reporting Authority. They also send people to go and check whether CA firms are doing quality audit. So, so we have, uh, again, if we have, uh, as per authority, we have NFRA. Below that, we have quality review board. Below that, we have peer review board. There are three independent bodies. Authority wise, NFRA is the strongest. Then we have quality review board. Then we have peer review board. They can come to CA firms and they can see whether the CA firms are doing quality audit in the process. Confidential information of the client will get shared with this board. It is absolutely fine. It is absolutely fine to breach that. Professional obligation. Accountant may disclose information to comply with technical professional standards. Suppose you are making a report. You are making a report and, and, and law says that law or standard says that give this information. If standard is saying that this information should be given in the report, given in the certificate, given in the document, you have to do it. You are under professional obligation to give audit reports, review reports, uh, compilation reports, lot of reports you have to give and is required by the standards to give that information. You have to do it. Then, below that professional protection may be necessary to protect the professional interest of an accountant in legal proceedings, in legal cases or finally, if client himself authorizes if it's permitted by law and authorized by client, if client himself, it is per, law says, okay, subject to what, uh, subject to what client says, you can do it. Client himself authorizes. Guys, there are so many exceptions. So, as per code of ethics, there are not two exceptions. Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. There are not two exceptions. There are many exceptions. Now, see, it's in sequence. So, let's have that sequence straight. The biggest thing across when I, when I teach, the biggest thing is law. So, if law says, you have to do it. If there is a legal requirement, you have to do it. Now, below that, regulatory authorities. If regulatory authorities call you, they explain you, explain regulations, they are justified, you have to do it. Then below that, there are review authorities, NFRA. Peer review, quality review, NFRA is under section 132, we have NFRA of Companies Act, we have NFRA. Then we have peer review board made by CA Institute, quality review board made by government. Then below that, suppose there are standards which say that when you make reports and certificates, you have to give this information, you have to do it. Then in court of law. 
if proceedings are going on okay so below that i will say that to protect yourself professional chartered accountant protect yourself you have to do that and below that then comes the client see so if you want to remember you can have a sequence you can have the sequence see exceptions exceptions to confidentiality exceptions to confidentiality in sequence of importance in sequence of importance so the most important is law if law is saying to breach it do it then regulatory authorities if regulatory authorities are saying it do it then review authorities then professional obligation because of standards standards technical professional standards are saying to do it then below that professional himself himself his own own protection below that client authorizes so there was requirement of the information Re information was required and client is authorizing it go go and give the information this way you can remember it for long time see whenever i am explaining i'll be giving background i'll be explaining the concept and i'll be giving some tricks to you i will be giving some tricks to how to remember it and the most important thing i am going to give you audios see in theory understanding is important fifth but then equally important how are you going to remember it now next is you may get a question again okay that finally as per law or as per regulation or as per review authorities or as per standards or uh, as per professional protection or client authorization you are supposed to disclose confidential information you are supposed to disclose confidential information what factors if you are deciding if or okay you are trying to make a decision you are trying to make you are trying to make a you are trying to make a decision whether you are trying to make a you are trying to make a decision whether to disclose confidential information whether to whether to whether to disclose confidential information what factors you should keep in mind think about it you are you are in a dilemma whether to disclose it to regulatory authorities you are in dilemma whether to give it to the court to protect yourself you are in a dilemma so you are in a dilemma whether to disclose information or not what factors will you what factors will you keep in mind they are common sense based very simple straight forward what factors you will keep in mind okay there is a question there is a question on this it's very simple most important what harm if i disclose this information suppose suppose court case is going on that that uh, managing director has siphoned off 
50 crores from the company. Court case is going on that he has siphoned off 50 crores from the company. And uh, in the name of research and development, and you have done the audit of research and development. Now, now, can you explain the details? Can you explain details of all the research and development which company is doing, on which products it is doing? What is the status? You should think, uh, what is the harm? Harm is that if, they, if this information becomes public, then competitors will know all these things. They will try to develop their own products and they will go much ahead than the company. It will be a big opportunity loss. You should think what will be the harm to the company? How big will be the harm? How crucial, how important will be the harm to company? What harm to the company? What harm to people involved? What harm to government? You are supposed to think about it. What will harm to different parties? And okay, so you feel that harm is much less than the benefit overall. Then you should think next is, is this information which I am going to disclose, am I confident about it? Am I confident? Am I having sufficient evidence to prove that this information is reliable, this information is appropriate? Is this, can I substantiate this information is appropriate? Then finally, method of communication. Should I put it on Twitter? Should I put it on Twitter? Now it is X. Should I put it on LinkedIn? Should I put it on Instagram? Should I put emails to people? Should I make a public announcement? Should I put it on the website? What should be the method of communication? If it is sensitive information. It should be given in person, in person to someone. Evaluate the proposed method of communication and to whom we are going to communicate. Never use mass media. Never use mass media. Prefer one-to-one -one meeting. If that is not possible, one-to-one -one Zoom meeting. That is not possible, one-to-one -one phone call. And to whom? Suitable recipient. You cannot give this confidential information to assistants. You cannot do that. See, I remember... We were doing audit of uh, Sony Entertainment Television. I was a first year article. I was a first year article and I was supposed to check salary. So I collected all the data of salary. I remember I did sampling, then saw salary slips, then saw payments, saw calculations, then saw uh, appointment letters, promotion letters, bonus calculations and so on, tedious deduction and everything. Then came salary of directors. So, breakup uh, in accounts, it was a complete salary. There was no breakup. How much is salary of which particular director? So, I asked for information. Person didn't give me any information. Didn't give me any information. I was a little annoyed. I felt bad. I felt I don't have any value. But then he said, Listen, this is very crucial confidential information. We are going to share it with your boss only. It's very important with whom you share. You cannot go and share with the assistants. You cannot go and share with the subordinates. You have to go and talk to the person. So, again, it is a sequence of importance. So, if you are, if you are thinking about disclosing information, the most important thing is, the most important, again in the sequence of importance, these points are whether, how harmful it will be. How harmful, assess potential harm to any party including third parties if client or employing organization agrees to disclosure. Carefully understand what will be harm to the company, third parties, government authorities, anyone, whether it will be harm because of disclosing this information then whether whether he has substantiated is he confident about this information he has substantiated he has enough evidence to support this information is this information is true method of communication 
method of communication is extremely important evaluate the method of communication and suitable recipient so you may get a case where information is shared with per pa personal assistant which is inappropriate you will get a case where social media is used for disclosing confidential information inappropriate you will get a case where information is given without verifying whether it is appropriate you will get a case where lot of losses share price have declined by by crores of rupees hundreds of crores of rupees because of this information okay so again it is in sequence most important thing is it going to harm anyone okay so it's not going to harm anyone then next step harm anyone or harm is less than the benefits next step verify is this information verified this verify next step decide the method and finally who will be given this information so it's in sequence guys you can say that it's a four step process you can simply say it's a four step process first step is it harmful if it's not harmful where the information is appropriate reliable then method and finally suitable recipient so see guys there are so many questions so you may get a question on confidentiality maintaining confidentiality we are not supposed to share information with so and so so and so so and so so and so that is one question then you may get a different question about ex uh, about exceptions with whom you can share it so you may get a question with whom you cannot share with whom you can share okay and then before sure at the time of sharing okay you need to take four factors you need to keep four factors in mind take my words this is going to be very very important in the new course you are going to get lot of cases on this in new course now next is because they are going to come up with the case study pattern and in this case study this these these things are very famous in acca and cpa in acca and cpa when they draft case studies they they, they they draft case studies they focus on these principles lot of cases are based on these principles confidential information confidential information of former client or employer okay we have discussed this it's again a repetition irrespective of if the assignment is over the person you are not doing a particular assignment you the person is no longer your client even if the assignment is over or he is no longer client in any assignment you are supposed to preserve confidential you are supposed to preserve confidentiality you cannot share this information with anyone even after assignment is over even after relationship with the client is over you cannot share this information definitely you learn a lot from the assignments you learn a lot from assignments how to make judgments you learn a lot about you learn a lot about industry about the business about the systems you learn a lot you get a lot of experience so you can definitely use that experience to perform other audit assignment that is absolutely fine you are not sharing any crucial information okay so accountant must not discuss confidential info even after ending client or employer relationship even after ending even after ending you are supposed to maintain confidentiality can you use the experience of course accountants can use prior experience in new roles with new clients but they cannot directly share information that in so and so company so and so thing happened confidential information from previous role cannot be used or disclosed so even after end of relationship even after end of relationship even after you can have this heading also even after end of friendship don't share information using experience absolutely fine but sharing information not allowed so even after this is the first point then second point you can use experience but you cannot definitely share information with anyone next is guys 
professional behavior professional behavior see this is the last fundamental principle so there are five fundamental principles cbi office office of cbi objectivity we have seen stay away from undue influence that was the application point then competence we have seen we have seen professional competence and due care then confidentiality we have seen now professional behavior and integrity we have seen professional behavior simply respect professional behavior means people will come to you with the assignments they will give you assignment they will give you work they will give you audit work they will give you accounting work they will give you tax taxation work they will give you finance work okay respect the law if this is see when it comes to audit assignment companies act law is applicable bank audit banking regulations are applicable respect the law do things as required by law respect terms of engagement in terms of engagement there was a timetable in terms of engagement there was a timetable please follow that timetable be professional respect terms of engagement in that it was already specified these are the budgeted number of hours this is the fees respect the time budget respect the fees that is professional behavior don't do anything which bring disrepute to the institute so again i remember one of our colleagues okay one of our colleagues he was sent uh, so i was in article ship with private scoopers mumbai office and uh, one of uh, i was again i was second year article and a third year article was sent to indore from mumbai he was sent to indore to do audit and the assignment was of around 10 12 days so this guy he was sent he went there uh, a good hotel hotel was booked for him for 10 12 days he was very comfortable out there and every day every day after finishing the work he used to come in the evening hotel room and he used to make calls to his close uh, close friend living in delhi so during that time std charges std charges means uh, when you calling from one state to another state you are calling from one state to another state then heavy charges heavy charges used to get applicable okay and if you are in a hotel these hotel guys are going to charge going to charge humongous money humongous they are going to charge huge now he used to talk for many hours and on continuous basis on 10 12 days he was talking now you guys know better some of you must be having that love virus okay please if you want to succeed in ca stay away from such virus okay stay away from such virus otherwise life will become difficult so now so now uh, uh, this this problem this problem uh, once he came back along with that client's manager also came that your prince was staying with us and in 12 days the amount of calls you have made hotel bill for telephone is 20000 rupees 20000 rupees now that was that was not a professional behavior complete mockery of professional behavior so our associate director left right center he scolded that person like hell and he was made to pay 20000 rupees to the client client is not going to bear it pwc is not going to bear it you are going to bear it from your own account and you are supposed to pay if you don't pay you will be terminated and then we remember a mail was sent to everyone that you should never use 
telephones given by the clan for personal use, not even for official purpose. Don't use much for official purpose also. If you want to use phones, use your mobile phones and if you feel that charges are heavy, take prepaid cards from the office, take prepaid cards from the office or uh, recharge vouchers from the office, but please don't use, misuse facilities given by the client. Same thing is written here guys and many such things happen like in professional world it is a well accepted thing that there is something called out of pocket expenses. You are aware out of pocket expenses? So, you say, say if so your fees is of uh, 100 lakhs, fees of 100 lakhs, then around 10 percent, 10 percent, 10 lakh rupees, around 10 percent, 10 lakh rupees will be allowed as a as a out of pocket expenses. But if someone goes and does 25, 30, 40 percent as out of, out of pocket expenses, then that is not good. That is not a good thing. Okay, let's see guys. Compliance, professional behavior means compliance with the law and regulation and avoid any conduct that could discredit the profession. Respect law, respect engagement letter and don't do anything which discredit the profession. Should not engage in activity that could harm integrity, objectivity and reputation. Please don't do anything which bring disrepute to the institute, to the profession or you will be called person, uh, you are leaking some information, giving some information to others, you are working, you know, you are taking care of the personal, you are taking care of the personal things, uh, you are helping your friends and relatives at cost of the client, please don't do that. In fact, now this application portion, that's very important, application portion. So, this is 1A, 1B, this is simply what do you mean by professional behavior. And now the application portion, promotion, when promoting, when promoting personal work, an accountant should not bring profession to disrepute. A professional accountant should be truthful and avoid making exaggerated claims about the services. Please don't do it. Never ever. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. Please don't go and promote. Uh, uh, in promotion, please don't go and promote wrong things. So, when client comes to you, they are planning to take their services and you are pitching them, you are giving, you are pitching them, you are giving them information, avoid making exaggerated claims that if I do your audit, your share market value will increase by 100%. What nonsense. Don't make such claims. This is exaggerated. If I do uh, cost control activity for you, I will reduce cost by 95% exaggerated claims. I will reduce your tax liability by to 10 percent exaggerated claims. I will get you loan of 1000 crore exaggerated claims. Okay, you are simply having capital, you are having assets of 10 crores, I will get you loan of 1000 crore. Don't do that. So, when you are promoting, don't make exaggerated claims. This is, this is this will, this is ultimately it is going to, uh, in some time, it will be proved that it was all false. It will be proved that it is, it, it was all false. And if it is proved, if it is proved, it is proved that it was all false, you bring disrepute to the institute. Respect others. Respect others. Don't make You may get, will get a case study. You are going to get case studies in this application. An accountant should not make disparaging, bad, unsubstantiated comparison to others, fouling, uh, using bad language, bad things about others. Don't do that. Guidelines: Accountant must not violate. Accountants must not violate advertisement guidelines issued by the Council of the Institute. So, we are going to study this about the guidelines. So, this 
this is this is all about promotion only don't do wrong promotions don't make exaggerated claims respect others and then guidelines follow when you're advertising you have to follow ca act ca act its clarifications guidelines and what ethical sand board says we are going to see this later on okay guys so if we talk about professional behavior so if you are talking about professional behavior that is section 115 professional behavior section 115 first you focus on definition so law rules and regulation terms of engagement don't do anything which bring disrepute to the institute disrepute to institute so you focus on that first and then you start about soliciting work don't make exaggerated claims don't do exaggerated claims about your services untrue unreal claims about your services that is going to bring disrepute to the institute avoid disparaging foul comments about others unsubstantiated information about others don't do that then follow ca acts its guidelines and clarifications ethical sand board again see if you do grouping you remember things for you know you are going to remember things for longer period of time if you do grouping thing now there is very interesting conflict resolution so right now we are going with chapter number 19 professional ethics professional ethics and liability of auditor and the first thing we are focusing on is five fundamental principles what are these principle what are these principles how to implement how to implement these principles getting practical case studies you should be careful you should know what principle to apply so you know that you are making wrong claims you will bring disrepute apply professional competence you know that you are going you are disclosing something uh, secret information confidentiality then you know that your team is not working properly they are not updated professional competence then you are under a lot of pressure to change your opinion objectivity you are getting associated with bad people false information integrity guys as i said you will be getting lot of cases from these five principles that's why it is important to spend time on that i understand you have studied these you have studied these principles uh, at inter level also but then right now we are talking about application we are talking about case studies and at every point i am going to explain what kind of case studies you will be getting and once okay now now next is 
threats and evaluation. Okay, okay. Oh, very important. Conflicts. We are very interesting. Sometimes there will be conflict among these five principles. Sir, how these things will conflict with each other? These fundamental principles will conflict of each other. For example, as per integrity, we should be honest and straightforward. We should be honest and straightforward. We should tell what is the truth always. But then we have principle of confidentiality that we should always preserve non-public secret information. We should not give it to others. So, there will be a practical situation whether to protect integrity and whether to protect uh, confidentiality. So, there will be conflict whether to go for integrity, whether to go for confidentiality. Then, one more situation I am saying. One more situation. The concept of professional competence. The com concept of professional competence says that you should acquire all the, all the knowledge, you should maintain work accordingly, you should work diligently, professional com diligently. You should get all the knowledge, you should work carefully, you should thoroughly, you should work thoroughly, you should be careful. So, this is, that is professional competence. At the same time, we have professional behavior which is saying to respect terms of engagement, to respect timetable. To respect the commitments you have done. Now, what to do? There is a conflict. Whether we should go for very ex extensive checking, professional behavior or we should go for saving time and fulfilling the timetable. There is a conflict. So, during the course of profession, whether it is practice, in the course of profession, whether it is practice, whether it is practice or whether it is job, you are going to come you are going you are going to come across come across the situation where there will be conflicts amongst the fundamental principles what will you do in such case what will you do as a chartered accountant now these are very tricky very very tricky situations you need to sit down understand the situation understand what principle says understand uh, what things are going wrong and you have to you have to balance these things. You have to balance these things and you have to take a decision. Okay. Take decision. The conflicts will arise. But definitely you should document. This was the conflict. I, have, I had discussions with so and so people. This was the input. This was the analysis. This is the conclusion. Everything needs to be documented carefully. So, if tomorrow someone comes and questions you, you should be able to explain why you made such decisions? Let's see guys. Conflict resolution between fundamental principles. So, we know that chart account is supposed to comply with five fundamental principles. It is supposed to comply with five fundamental principles. The conceptual framework provides the approach for Octua. Now, the, con the conceptual framework. See, what we are studying is principle and how to apply those principles. That is called framework basic principles. The conceptual framework provides the approach for accountants to assist in complying with principles. We are supposed to comply and for compliance, we have a complete framework. But then sometimes conflicts may arise. If conflict arises between fundamental principles, accountants should consult with relevant parties including those within the firm, those charged with governance, the institute or legal counsel. So, if there is a conflict, the most most important thing is to consult, to discuss. So, go to the, go to the colleagues in the firm maybe, discuss with them, discuss with them, go and discuss, do go and discuss with management, TCWG, go and discuss with CA institute, legal counsel if required and then document accountant should document issues discussions decisions what were the issues what were the discussion decisions and their rational if some decision was taken what is the rational this does not absolve them from responsibility to exercise professional judgment resolve conflict 
or disassociate from conflicting matters unless prohibited by law. So yes, that doesn't mean that you go and do wrong things. Does not absolve. See, prof you have to apply professional judgment. Professional judgment means using all the knowledge, skills, training, experience, circumstances, taking into account while making judgment. That's called professional judgment. Okay, and then resolve conflicts or disassociate. You have to use professional judgment. Okay. So here, this they talk about compliance. They talk about compliance and then they talk about framework for application. So we have compliance and for that we have a framework also. Now next is conflict. So sometimes conflicts may arise. Sometimes, sometimes conflicts may arise. Okay. So now if con conflicts arise, then you have to go and discuss with people. That's very consult with people. You have to make the list. And you need to document everything. What was the issue? What was the discussion? What was the decision? What is the logic? What is the reason behind it? Complete thing. So explain situation. Explain what is there. So there will be a question on this. And people will ask you if there is a conflict, what needs to be done? Discussion, documentation with rational. Okay. So guys, we are through with five fundamental principles. We are through with the if conflict arises, what will happen? As I said, I understand, I truly understand. Right now we are going with a lot of theory portion. Okay. Right now we are... Right now we are going, we are going with a lot of theory portion, but then as I said in new course, it has a lot of importance. In new course, it is very important. There is a lot of importance. So, so uh, we have to spend time on this. We have to discuss these concepts. We need to get clarity. What kind of cases will be asked and how we are going to solve it. Okay, guys. Now, come on. So during the class, during the class, keep scribbling, keep writing, keep marking. See, smartness is extremely important. When you study, smartness will be extremely important. If you are smart in spending your time, how, what best you can do in the given time, that is going to differentiate you from others. So if you are going to do a lot of marking, a lot of underlining, a lot of short things, a lot of revision points, highlighting and simply listen to audio once, it will be fully prepared. And during the class, if you are not paying full attention, during the class, if you are not paying full attention, okay, you are spending your time here and there and you are watching at mobile n number of times, then it is half-hearted attention, half-hearted attempt. You are going to need two times, three times more time when you go back home. Now it's up to you. Okay. It's up to you how to use your time, how to use your class time properly. Now, next interesting thing is threats. Next very interesting thing is threats. Evaluation of threats and safeguards. Now what do you mean by threat? What do you mean by threat? Okay. Okay. Now, suppose you like someone in your college. You like someone in your college. Okay. And now you are regularly meeting that person in college. And you come to know that your brother or your sister is also taking admission in that college. It is a threat. You will get caught. You will get caught. And then, and then you will be having time of your life. When family will take care of you. Isn't it? So there is a threat that you will get caught. Okay. Anyways. Now guys. What is here? 
Threats are the circumstances or conditions. Threats are circumstances or conditions which create pressure on chartered accountants, chartered accountants to go against the fundamental principle. To go against the fundamental principles. So, such situations, circumstances which create pressure to go against the fundamental principles, not to comply with the fundamental principles, they are called threats. As a chartered accountant, you should identify whether there are circumstances or situations which are creating pressure on him to break the fundamental principles. You should identify the threat. You should identify the threat. For example, for example, you met a friend in the company. You started doing audit. You started doing audit, and then you came to know that you, one of your good friend is working in working in a department there. You were not aware before it. Now, now because of your very close relationship with your friend. It is going, it will create pressure on you, pressure on you to hide, to hide misstatements, to protect your friend. So this is a, this is a situation which creates pressure. It is a threat. So child accountants are supposed to identify, are there circumstances or situation which are creating pressure not to comply, not to comply with the fundamental principles. See, please don't try to remember word by word. Don't try to remember word by word. Okay. Just remember the key points and explain own words. See guys, if you see module, you will realize these notes, titanium book is a blessing. Titanium book is a blessing. Because you don't have to study big paragraphs. You don't have to study big paragraph. These side headings are magical. They are revolutionary. Okay. These are going to make very, very simple, easy, convenient to understand, to retain and to reproduce also. Evaluate the threat. How big is that threat? Is it really big? Is it really creating a big pressure? Can it really change the opinion? Can it really affect the quality of services? Can it really lead to non-compliance of law and principles? Is that threat very big? Your friend is doing something. Your friend is into. He's, your friend is an engineer. And he is into maintenance of machines. It has nothing to do directly with accounts. Accounts or financial statements. Evaluate the threat. But on the other hand, suppose your friend was an account head himself. Then the threat becomes a bigger threat. So analyze the situation. Is it really creating a big pressure? Can it lead to change in opinion, change in quality of services? Address the threat. So if there is a threat, we may try to eliminate or reduce them to acceptable level. If it is possible, feasible, we may try to eliminate them or to reduce threat to acceptable level. So, identify the threats, evaluate how big are the threats and then think about eliminating or reducing it. Now, types of threats, this is very simple, very easy. We have studied this before. Types of threats, SAFI can be the shortcut. Guys, if you come across any better shortcut, do share with us. We will give you credit in our notes and share the new shortcuts also. Okay. Safi. Safi, Safi, Safi. Threats to compliance. Threats to compliance with fundamental principles. Fall into one or more of the following categories. Self-interest threat. Self-interest. Sir, what do you mean by self-interest? Interest means benefit. If a chartered accountant's 
बेनिफिट चार्ड अकाउंटेंट बेनिफिट इज कनेक्टेड टू क्लाइंट इन वन और मोर वेज अपार्ट फ्रॉम द असाइनमेंट इज डूइंग इफ चार्ड अकाउंटेंट बेनिफिट इज पर्सनल बेनिफिट प्रोफेशनल बेनिफिट इज कनेक्टेड टू क्लाइंट इन वन और मोर वे अपार्ट फ्रॉम द असाइनमेंट इज ऑडिट असाइनमेंट इज डूइंग ओके देन then to protect his interest he may come he may uh, to protect his interest he may breach fundamental principles he is having his investment in shares or investment in debentures he has made deposits whatever it is i understand investment in shares is prohibited but then we are studying code of ethics right now don't bring law companies act right now he is having personal investment in the company to protect it to make it grow he may falsify his report and breach integrity principle so self interest means to protect your own benefits to protect your own benefits self review threat safi self interest self review what is self review threat guys this will be the last thing for the day okay and tomorrow we won't be having class it's sunday and then from monday onwards we'll be having a complete two and a half hours of class okay and do remember to listen to audios and we'll be having tests also we will be having five class tests and then we'll be having one full course test also so keep studying all the content okay then self review threat we know what is the self review threat a situation or a circumstance where where you are reviewing checking examining evaluating work your own work which you have done earlier for example you implemented internal control system and now you are working as a auditor you designed the vouchers now you working as a auditor you design internal control system you implemented internal control system you made lot of thing and now you are working as a auditor you are checking your own work there are big chances that you are going to hide lot of deficiencies because it is going to bring question on your work so if there is a situation when you are checking your own work you only prepare fix as a register and you are working as a auditor now so such circumstances is self review threat safi 2s then a for advocacy suppose you are doing a assignment to list a particular you are doing a assignment to list a particular company you are into listing process you you are you are in you are into listing process okay now so many times you are into assignment where you have to defend and promote your client many a times while defending or promoting the client they may say so many things so they may do so many things say so many things about the client maybe which are untrue breaching integrity breaching integrity they make so many claims which may be exaggerated exaggerated going against professional competence professional behavior so that is called advocacy threat so when if when you are valuing a company when you are making the listing them or defending if you are promoting or defending a company in the process you may breach lot of principles just to promote the company or defend the company that is advocacy threat so if you are checking your past judgments or activities past judgments or activities that is self review threat excessively promoting clients uh, clients or employer excessive promotion going beyond what is true advocacy threat familiarity close close sympathetic relation with the client 
और एम्प्लॉयर सिंपेथेटिक क्लोज रिलेशन विद द क्लाइंट एंड देयर पीपल इन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट यू मे कॉम्प्रोमाइज विद द सिचुएशन देन इंटिमिडेशन थ्रेट वॉट इज इंटिमिडेशन थ्रेट यू आर बींग थ्रेटेंड यू आर बींग थ्रेटेंड यू विल बी रिमूव्ड यूर वर्क विल बी रिड्यूस्ड यू विल वी विल विल हैव अ लिटिगेशन अगेंस्ट यू डिस्करेज डिस्करेज थ्रेटन if that is a situation that is called intimidation threats guys after this we are going to see examples of all these five threats for a chartered accountant who are who is in practice and again examples for a chartered accountant again example for chartered accountant for a chartered accountant who is in who is in job for chartered accountant who is in practice and for a chartered accountant who is in job so we are going to see examples and these examples may come for 4 5 marks okay so there is a type of threats guys so we completed all five fundamental principles we have to identify threat evaluate threat take action we will understand different types of threats there there are five types of threats five types of threats there examples how to evaluate the threat the process what kind of safeguards we can apply to reduce the threat we are going to see that also okay guys so let's end our class today here do listen to audio revision carefully that is important and that is going to keep you very comfortable religiously and at least two to three audio revisions you should listen mandatorily bye bye everyone